As future graduate interior architects, we must familiarize ourselves with a set of regulations and bylaws set by the governing bodies in the industry. My name is Intias, shedding a light on the code of conducts and special provisions set for the interior architects, together with conditions of engagement for professional practice. With the objective being to contribute to the promotion of professional standard and maintain a strict discipline required by an interior designer, there is a set of acts and rules determined by the governing board of architects. For instance, in our case, in Malaysia, the Lembaga Architect Malaysia is the governing board that issues license for design practices. The board issues regulations for conduct in architect's rules 1986 and ensures that the interior design practice is recorded and allowed the designated privileges of acquiring the license. Amongst the duties and responsibilities, an interior designer must uphold the continual maintenance of his professional standard. As per bylaws set by the Lembaga Architects Malaysia, a licensed designer must be well qualified to meet the project expectations and must not be deceptive in conducting their practice. Fair characteristics are expected from a true designer when resolving disputes between parties involved in the project and must verify that their employers and employees are well qualified. As mentioned before, acquiring a license for practice opens a lot of privileges such as being able to advertise and publish illustrations of their work to promote their practice as well as having access to confidential information in engaging with clients. All of which come with their own prohibitions such as restricting from partaking in businesses that jeopardize their practice and reputation. Maturing as an interior designer includes being respectful to the rights and interests of others partaking in the business and projects as well as fellow industry practitioners. In reference to the professional special provisions set by the Lembaga Architect Malaysia in the Architects Act 1967, unregistered interior architects' work and service will not be recognized as an interior designer service and are not entitled to any privileges including payments and charges for their services. And in accordance to the bylaw set by the board, registration would include process of verifying one's qualifications which includes supervised practical sessions, passing examinations and payment of annual fees in order to continue their practice. In addition to the code of conduct and special provisions, the Board of Lembaga Architect Malaysia also implemented bylaws on conditions under which interior architects engage with their clients. It details the responsibilities of regulating conversations between client, contractor and other parties involved, to supervising project performance and its progress. The board enlists the liabilities for interior designers and compiles conditions favorable for all parties involved in the project, such as the requirement of client to provide all necessary information for the interior designer to begin work on the project, as well as signing a written agreement to document the progresses. Upon completion of the work, the project and due payments, the project the board allows the handover of document to the client for further reproduction of the project should they feel inclined to do so. This marks the termination of the services stated in the agreement between interior designer and client. The code of conduct and conditions of agreement are implemented by the architect's board in Malaysia to protect the designer from malpractice and maintain a professional standard within the industry. This concludes the discussion regarding regulations set by the interior architects practicing in Malaysia. Thank you for watching.